Becoming a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. The legacy began in 1973. That was the year NCAA Division II was born. And since the very first day, our division has shaped generations of student athletes with a true sense of academics, athletics, and community. That is five decades of graduations, championships, teamwork, and personal development. 50 years of shaping student athletes into world-class leaders. NCAA Division II, our division, our legacy. NCAA Division II, community engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours.
legacy began in 1973. That was the year NCAA Division II was born. And since the very first day, our division has shaped generations of student athletes with a true sense of academics, athletics, and community. That is five decades of graduations, championships, teamwork, and personal development. 50 years of shaping student athletes into world-class leaders. NCAA Division II, our division, our legacy. NCAA Division II Community Engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome inside Royal Broome Pavilion here in Seattle, Washington, as we have game two of the doubleheader coming up tonight. The uh, women's teams got after it in the first game, and uh, now the men's teams from Seattle Pacific University and Central Washington University. Central Washington located in Ellensburg, about 110 miles east of here. And... Uh, they have a competitive program as usual. They come in with a record of 13 and 5 overall, 6 and 3 in GNAC play. They have won their last four in a row. Falcons 11 and 11 overall. They are 4 and 5 in the GNAC. And uh, Falcons have lost their last two. It's a new month, though, as uh, the women proved that to us, as uh, the. Um, the SPU women defeated the uh, CWU women by a count of 76 to 65. That was one of the best offensive outputs that the SPU women have had. Wildcats, coached by Brandon Renta, he is in his sixth year 
at uh, the helm of the Wildcats program. That includes the COVID year where they did play some games. Falcons coached by interim head coach Kefri Fazio in his first year. He's been an assistant on the Falcons staff. And uh, as I mentioned, they come in four and five. That is good for a sixth place tie with Western Washington for uh, a spot in the GNAC tournament. Uh, the top six teams in the conference make the tournament. And right now, SPU does hold the tiebreaker over Western Washington. They still have another game coming up against them in Bellingham a week from tonight. So we'll see how that shakes out. And, uh, of course, the Falcons trying to get up a little higher than sixth if they can. They're just a game behind Alaska Anchorage and two games behind the Central Washington Wildcats. They are 6-3, and three, Falcons 4-5. and five. Uh, Northwest Nazarene also 6-3. and three. They will be here on Saturday for a 2 p.m. tip. Starting lineups here, the Wildcats are going to go with Kevin Holden, a freshman from Apple Valley, California. Went to R.A. Long High School in, in Longview, Washington, though. Bradley Swilly, a freshman from Tacoma, Washington. And Angelo Lloyd getting, I believe, his first start. Um, I'm not seeing that he has started any ball games, but he is their leading scorer. So that may be a, mis uh, a, a typo. Um, he is their leading scorer at 14.3 points per game. He's from here in Seattle. Went to Kentwood High School in Kent. And Samad Hector in the circle, jumping it up against Shaw Anderson here. Anderson wins the tip. Samad Hector out of Brooklyn, New York. And uh, the Falcon or the uh, Wildcats also starting Maverick Sanders, a freshman from Spokane. Here's Anderson getting in deep. Going over Sanders and couldn't get the shot to go. And it's ripped away by Holden. And he'll bring it across midcourt. Falcons, as I mentioned, coached by Kefri Fazio. They're going with Owen Moriarty. Jaden Pentagar. And we'll get you as uh, that one in the post, or in the paint there. Uh, Maverick Sanders scores. And puts the Wildcats on the board. Maui Z with the ball right now for SPU. Trace Evans wearing number 14. And Shaw Anderson, the leading scorer for the Falcons. Evans leaves that one short. Evans shooting 60% from the floor coming into the ballgame. Among the leaders in the conference. As here's Hector. Backing down on Evans and goes up and leaves it short. Evans with the rebound. Evans, six foot nine, big guy out of Australia. Here's Z, cross court for Pinagar. Pinagar will drive, kick it out to Moriarty, back to Evans in the post. Evans backing down, puts it up, couldn't get it to go. And the rebound to Hector. Evans 0 for 2 early. Here come the Wildcats. Angelo Lloyd at the controls, and he's fouled by Moriarty. Owen Moriarty from right here in Seattle went to O'Day High School. Jaden Pinnegar from Logan, Utah is a sophomore. Moriarty is as well. Maui Zia Jr. from right here in Seattle went to Roosevelt. Trace Evans, as I mentioned, a sophomore from New South Wales, Australia. And Sean Anderson, a senior from Kelso, Washington, leading the Falcons in scoring. At 20.2 per ball game, and he's a 91% free throw shooter. This is Lloyd, transfer from Seattle University, and he misses on the shot. And Maui Z will bring it across midcourt for SPU. Getting a screen from Anderson. Z to the bucket, blocked. And that was Sanders that came over and got it. Out of bounds. SPU will keep it. Good crowd on hand here. Some people making the drive from Ellensburg and uh, the men's basketball game is usually pretty well attended here. Anderson stumbles and falls, but uh, Maverick Sanders fouled him. And so Sanders commits his first foul. Sanders, as I mentioned, a freshman from Spokane, Washington. And the Falcons with possession, looking for their first bucket of the ballgame. 2-0 Central Washington. 
Really, the uh, women's game got off to a slow start, and then really the the SPU women caught fire. Here's Shaw Anderson back, to, uh, puts it up and hits it off the back iron, no good. And the rebound to the Wildcats. And it's going to be Pentagar coming up with the steal there as Swilly left it behind. And the Falcons with possession. Moriarty for Evans. And he'll get it to Z. Z with the white headband. And the Falcons and the uh, Wildcats, maybe. Now, Maverick Sanders is wearing pink shoes. This is a three from Z, and it's off the mark. Shaw Anderson with the pink socks. And uh, you see a few of the, the Falcons with some pink accessories. As this is uh, Brands Ca Breast Cancer Awareness Night. There's a three from Samad Hector, and it goes down. Nothing but net. And it's a 5-0 lead for the Wildcats. Falcons have gone three and a half minutes here without a bucket. Falcons with the uh, women's team. With an assistant coach, Karen Byers, who is currently undergoing radiation treatment for breast cancer. As Moriarty misses on the three. But the Falcons with the offensive rebound. Here's Pentagar for a three, and that one goes down. And the Falcons are on the board. Jaden Pentagar knocks in the three. And it's a 5-3 ball game. 15-57 left, and that will take us to a timeout on the floor. 5-3, Central Washington with the lead. We'll be right back in just a moment. inside Royal Brown Pavilion. Greg Sexton with you on the SPU webcast. 5-3 Wildcats with the early lead. 15-57 to go in the first half. And neither team really getting untracked yet. Kind of a statistical oddity here. The uh, Falcons have shot one of eight from the floor. Wildcats just two of four. They've shot half as many. They have half, half as many field goal attempts. But they also hold the rebounding advantage five to four. So, uh, One turnover for the Wildcats to none for the Falcons. And uh, Wildcats have taken four fewer field goal attempts as they bring it across midcourt. And this is Cameron McNeil out on the right wing now. Out of Raleigh, North Carolina is going to take a jumper, and that one's off the mark. Chased down by Samad Hector, and he goes into the Falcons' bench pretty hard there. And... Uh, that was uh, David Zachman over there, I think, that took the worst of it. Ended up on his back. This will be another timeout here. As uh, I believe it was the Wildcats that took a timeout here. 30 second timeout. And. Uh, yeah, just kind of trying to reset things here after that collision with Hector and the uh, Falcons bench. Falcons players, the, the bench players wearing the pink shirts. In honor of breast cancer awareness in general, uh, Kay Yao, the former North Carolina State women's basketball coach, 
passed away due to breast cancer and uh, really women's co college basketball in particular has uh, done a really good job of memorializing her as Samad Hector with a three off the front iron long rebound and Moriarty ends up with it but uh, the men getting in on the action here tonight here's Trace Evans with a bucket as Moriarty finds him at the at the glass and the Falcons have tied it up at five Hector will get it to McNeil Cameron McNeil to Lloyd Angela Lloyd Jello, they call him, and he knocks in a three. Jello Lloyd, senior from Seattle, and uh, mentioned went to high school at Kentwood and transferred from Seattle University. Here's Shaw Anderson for Evans in the post. Evans being guarded by Hector. Evans is going to kick it out to Anderson. Anderson driving, puts it up, puts it in. Got around Colby Jeanette. Junior out of Post Falls, Idaho, Jeanette is. And Anderson with his first bucket of the game. And it's an 8-7 lead for Central Washington. Here's Hector driving to his right, going around Evans, going baseline. Reverses it up and in. And Hector kind of went in a circle there and was able to uh, scoop that one up and in with the right hand. Went all the way around Trace Evans. 10-7 Wildcats, 14 minutes to go first half. Here's Anderson. Being guarded by Jeanette. Anderson backing down, kicks it out, Moriarty. Now back to Anderson in the post. Here's Pentagar for a three. And Jaden Pentagar knocks down another three. That's his second of the game. 10-10, your score. Hector. Tried to get that one inside, and Evans got a piece of it, knocked it away, and Anderson comes up with it. Here's Shaw Anderson, spinning, putting it up, leaving it short. Evans with the rebound, puts it back up and in. Trace Evans puts the Falcons in front 12 to 10. Here's Samad Hector to Lloyd. Jello Lloyd with the ball. Fading away, puts it in off the glass. Lloyd with the bucket there, and he's got five points. It's 12 to 12, 13 minutes to go first half. Here's Moriarty for Pentagar. Pentagar being guarded by McNeil, drives, puts it up, and that one off the back iron, no good. Rebound to Jeanette. Jordan Clark with it. Clark from right here in Seattle as well, went to Seattle Christian School. Lloyd steps back, takes a three, and that one is off the back iron, no good, and a foul on the rebound. This one's going on Anderson, and that'll stay on the Central Washington end of the floor as they will bring in three subs here, Maverick Sanders, Mitch Breezy, and... Seth Dawson, the other one. Uh, Mitch Brizzy, I should say, is out of uh, Twin Falls, Idaho, as there's a baseline jumper from Cameron McNeil. And the Wildcats back in front by two, 14 to 12. Nikia Schoonerstedt in for the Falcons. And is, as is Jonas Latour, and Latour finds Schoenerstedt going to the bucket, puts it up and in. Falcons also with Kyle Lutonen on the floor, and Maui Z coming back in after a respite on the bench. 12 minutes to go, first half, 14-14 your score. Sanders in the corner, and now driving the lane, and... The shot is off the mark. It's going to be last touched by the Wildcats as Seth Dawson was the one taking it to the rim there. Couldn't connect on the shot. And it'll be Falcons ball when we come back from a timeout here with 11.47 to go first half. 14-14 your score. Back in just a moment.
back inside Royal Warren Pavilion. Greg Sexton with you on the SPU webcast. 14-14, both teams connecting on six field goal attempts. Two of four beyond the arc for both teams as well. And neither team has shot a free throw yet. Wildcats 6 of 12 from the floor and the Falcons 6 of 15. Both teams with seven rebounds in the ball game. And it'll be, as I mentioned before the break, possession for the Falcons. Maui Z will get it across midcourt, and he'll find Anderson. Gets it back out to Z. Here's Schoonerstedt. And that one kicked by Mitch Brizzy. And the uh, shot clock will reset to 20. Moriarty will get it in to Maui Z. Jonas Latour throws it away to Brizzy. And here come the Wildcats back the other way. This is Jordan Clark in the post for Brizzy. Latour got a hand in there. And Brizzy gets around Schoonerstedt and reverses it up and in. Going baseline. Went to the other side of the bucket, and Brizzy with his first two points. And knocked away by Cameron McNeil. He's coming the other way with the left-handed throwdown. And a timeout called by Kefri Fazio. Didn't like what he saw there. McNeil with four points. And the Wildcats up by four, 18 to 14. 10.42 to go here in the first half, and it'll be a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here. As uh, McNeil with the left-handed punctuation there. And uh, so far in this one, Lloyd with five, Hector with five, and now McNeil with four for the Wildcats. And for the Falcons, six from Pentagar on a couple of threes, four from Trace Evans. And Shaw Anderson and Nikia Schoonerstedt each with two. 10.42 to go here in the first half. And the Falcons will have possession. And they will uh, get it in here and get it across midcourt. Wildcats were putting up some resistance in the backcourt initially. Not a serious full court press though. Here's Pinnegar stumbling a bit, ends up losing it as McNeil comes away with it. Thought Pinnegar was going to be able to pick it back up. Here's Seth Dawson, a three on the way from McNeil, and that one's off the mark. Rebound to Maui Z. Ten minutes to play first half. 18-14 Wildcats leading the Falcons. Here's Trace Evans for Pinnegar. Over in the corner for Moriarty, and that one is off the mark. And the rebound comes down to Maverick Sanders. Kind of juggled it, hit the bottom of the glass with it, and uh, ended up right back with it. This is Clark. Getting it to McNeil, and Pentagar with a block. Moriarty comes up with it. Moriarty driving around Clark and puts it in. And draws the foul. Owen Moriarty with the end one opportunity here. And it was uh, Jordan Clark committing the foul. Moriarty to the free throw line. As uh, some more subs in here. Lo and, uh, Jello Lloyd back in. Along with Kevin Holden and Bradley Swilly. All original starters. Moriarty. Puts in the free throw. And that'll make it an 18 to 17 game. Owen Moriarty coming in to this game, a 78% free throw shooter on the season. Moriarty's had a good year for the Falcons in his first year at SPU. Here's Brizzy getting it to Lloyd. Lloyd will find Sanders. He'll step back and take a long two, and that one off the mark. Rebound to Moriarty. 
Here's Owen Moriarty, and no call there. Looked like he uh, plowed into Lloyd, but going back the other way, a throwdown, an alley-oop from Holden to Sanders. And Maverick Sanders throws it down with two hands. 20 to 17, Wildcats have a couple of dunks already in this one. Here's Evans driving down the, the lane and can't connect. And it's going back the other way. Here's Holden. Wildcats a three-point lead. Over in the corner. Sanders will get it back out to Holden for a three, and that one off the mark. Pentagar comes away with a rebound. Pentagar will kick it to Z for a three in transition, and that one off the rim, no good. Rebound Mitch Brizzy. Here's Jello Lloyd with the ball. Takes a three, fading to his right, and that one is off the front rim, no good. We get a whistle on the rebound. And this is going to take us to a timeout. Foul called. They get it on... Uh, that's on Swilly, Bradley Swilly. That'll be his first, but it, like I said, it's going to take us to a timeout here on the floor. 20-17, to 17, Wildcats with the lead, 7.51 to go in the first half. We'll be back in just a moment. Back inside Royal Brown Pavilion, Greg Sexton with you on the SPU webcast. 20 to 17 Central Washington with the lead. Falcons shooting 37% for the game at the moment, and the Wildcats shooting 45%. It'll be Falcons ball here. Now Z will bring it across midcourt, being guarded by Jordan Clark. Nikia Schoenerstedt will catch it. And get it to Shaw Anderson. Now Moriarty with it. Getting a screen from Schoenerstedt. Now Schoenerstedt going to take the three. And that one's short. And the rebound comes down to Maverick Sanders. Wildcats the other way. Jello Lloyd with it. And steps through a couple of defenders. Couldn't get the shot to go. And uh, they didn't uh, make a call on the contact either. Here's Moriarty underneath. Here's Anderson taking a three, and that one rims out. And the Falcons unusually cold from the floor tonight so far. Lloyd taking it to the bucket, lays it up and in. Angelo Lloyd with seven in the ballgame. 22-17. Wildcats by five. Here's Anderson. Anderson looking for help. Gets it out to Z. Right back to Anderson in the post. Anderson up over Sanders. Couldn't get it to go. And it's tied up on the floor momentarily, but it comes out of there. Bradley Swilly picks it up. And the Wildcats with possession. Up by five. Here's Sanders for Swilly. And now Lloyd. Swilly almost lost it to Pentagar there. Gets it back. And Pentagar got a piece of that one. Hector ends up out of bounds with it. It'll be Falcons ball. Hector was trying to save it and couldn't do it. Kyle Lutonen will come in for Jaden Pentagar. 
Under six to play here in the first half. And Maui Z will get it across midcourt. Lutonen hands it right back to him. Anderson with a long three, a long, uh, long jumper there. I believe it was a three. And that one is off the mark. And out of bounds to the Wildcats. Falcons cold from the floor tonight. 32%, which is unlike them. They have a lot of games where they shoot north of 50%. Here's Hector going around Schoenerstedt, and Schoenerstedt got a piece of it, and they're going to call him for a foul. Looks like Schoenerstedt played that one pretty well, but uh, they said he got a piece of Samad Hector. And so Hector going to the free throw line. Samad Hector second on the uh, Wildcats in scoring at 13.2 points per ball game. And first in rebounding, 8.6 boards per game. Knocks down the first free throw and the second. And he's a 73% free throw shooter coming into the game. Colby Jeanette will check back in for, SP, or for uh, CWU. rather. Wildcats have forged a seven-point lead here. The Falcons just need to get going offensively. Here's Luton in. And Luton in takes it to the bucket and lays it up and in. As a uh, good move there by Luton in. Strong to the bucket, but there's Jello Lloyd coming back the other way. And he shushes the crowd. Jello Lloyd with 10. And the Wildcats with an eight point lead, 27 to 19. Lloyd a couple of threes. Here's Anderson backing down on Jeanette, puts it up and couldn't get it to go. But he will be at the free throw line. 440 to go, first half. Jello Lloyd with 10 points for the Wildcats. Four of eight from the floor overall, two of four beyond the arc, or beyond the, uh, the three point line, I should say. Mod Hector with seven points as well for CWU. Trace Evans will come in for Nikia Schoenerstedt. As Anderson missed a free throw there, which is rare for him. He's a 91% free throw shooter. Went 16 of 16 in a game earlier here this year. I believe that was in the uh, win over Cal State San Marcos. Anderson does get the second free throw. It's a seven point ball game. Nice spin move there by Jordan Clark and he puts it in over Maui Z. Nine point lead now. Clark with his first two points of the ball game. Z for Evans. He'll swing it to Lutonen. Lutonen back out to Anderson. And now here's Evans backing down. And they're going to get Evans for the offensive foul there as Jeanette took the charge. There was one earlier that uh, looked a little more obvious, and they didn't call anything as the uh, ball was passed off. And uh, But this one, though, they get Evans for the offensive foul. Wildcats a nine-point lead. Here's Clark, and he has it ripped away. His last last touch by the Falcons, though. Kefri Fazio having a discussion with the official there near the Falcons bench. That is going to take us to our final media timeout of the first half. 29-20, Wildcats with the lead over the Falcons. We'll be right back in just a moment.
3.53 to go first half. 29-20, the Wildcats lead it over the Falcons. Greg Sexton with you on the SP webcast. As uh, the Wildcats have shot 48% from the floor and the Falcons just 33%. Both teams have made a couple of free throws. The Wildcats have out-rebounded the Falcons by, by one, 14 to 13. And it's been Jello Lloyd with 10. And here's another three on the way. That one rims out. Falcons with the rebound. Here's Evans. Finding Anderson, cutting to the, the basket there. Good find there from Trace Evans. And Anderson with five points in the ball game. And the Falcons within seven. Here's Samad Hector. And he gets it to Lloyd again. Lloyd is going to kick it out to Hector, but he walked with the basketball in the process. And uh, thought that he may have been fouled there. But the official gets him for the travel. So Falcons, maybe a bit of a break there. Here's Evans. Kicking it out to Maui Z. Back to Evans in the post. Evans walked to the basketball. Picked up the pivot foot there. And the Falcons turn it back over. 3.07 to go first half. Cameron McNeil. And Seth Dawson back into the game for Central Washington. Also, Kevin Holden. Wildcats, a pretty deep bench. Both of these teams really with a lot of a lot of players. as Moriarty kicks that one out of bounds. That'll reset the shot clock to 20. And the Wildcats will keep possession. Holden will inbound from in front of the Falcons bench. And he'll get it into Seth Dawson. Jeanette back to Dawson. He's gonna take a three. And he knocks it down. Seth Dawson, plenty of time to set his feet and take that one. And uh, the Falcons with a lack of defense on the perimeter there on that play. Here's Luton in taking a three in transition, and he knocks it down. Should say in rhythm, not uh, transition per se. But uh, Luton in taking the uh, the pass and putting up the three quickly. And it's 32-25. Here is Dawson. And Lutonen comes up with a steal. Lutonen back the other way, and he lays it up and in. And it's a five-point game. Kyle Lutonen, back-to-back buckets. He's got seven in the game. 32-27. Dawson going to take another three, and that one goes down. And the Falcons have not put up any resistance on either of Seth Dawson's threes in the last couple of minutes. As he had two easy looks at the bucket. Six points for Dawson. Here's Trace Evans down the lane, and he couldn't get it to go. Rebound comes down to Cameron McNeil. At the bucket, McNeil taking the pass from Holden. And the Wildcats right back in front by 10. Maui Z across midcourt. Falcons had trimmed it down to five. Here's Moriarty blocked. And a whistle. Hector with the block there, but I, uh, they're going to get a foul. That's going to go on Jeanette. And it'll send Owen Moriarty to the free throw line with a minute on the clock here in the first half. Wildcats on a four-game win streak. And the uh, Falcons have dropped their last two. Moriarty's free throw is good. Pentagar back in for the Falcons. Sanders back in for the Wildcats. Moriarty, a 78% free throw shooter. 
Gets the second one to go. He's got five points. And it's an eight-point lead for Central Washington. Here's Dawson. Holden. They get it inside for Hector. And he scoops it up and in with the hook shot on the baseline. And now Holden rips it away from Maui Z. And the Wildcats with another possession. And now... Lutonen right there, taking it away from McNeil. McNeil was trying to pass it over Lutonen. I forgot Lutonen is uh, he's got some long arms. Takes it away. Falcons catch a break as they're trying to get within ten here by the end of the half. Anderson gets to the bucket, lays it up and in, and draws the foul. With 11.7 left on the clock. Count the bucket. And that foul is going on Maverick Sanders. Shaw Anderson to the free throw line. He's got seven here in the first half. And trying to make it eight. Jello Lloyd back in for Central Washington. And Anderson trying to commit or trying to uh, complete rather the uh, three-point play at the free throw line, and he does. Seven-point ball game. Wildcats with the final shot of the first half coming up here. They're going to try to get the final shot anyway. Lloyd being defended well by Moriarty. Lloyd off balance and throws it up and does not draw iron. Good defense there by Owen Moriarty to end the first half. And the Falcons will head into the locker room at halftime, down by seven. 39-32, this is anybody's ball game, as uh, the Wildcats definitely outshot the Falcons in the first half. We'll, uh, do a, we'll, we'll uh, give you a recap of the first half stats coming up in a few minutes here, and then we will take a look around the rest of the Great Northwest Athletic Conference coming up in just a bit. But... Right now, we're going to step aside on the SP webcast. 39-32, Central Washington leading at the break. Being a champion takes more than talent. 
more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division 2, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. In NCAA Division II, student-athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student-athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student-athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Welcome back inside Royal Brougham Pavilion. Greg Sexton with you at halftime. Wildcats with a 39-32 lead over the Falcons. And uh, in the first half, the Wildcats shoot 53%. Falcons end up at 41%. So uh, they were able to knock down some shots late in the half and get that shooting percentage back up a bit. Wildcats were 5 of 11 beyond the arc. Falcons 3 of 10. And uh, the Falcons went 5 of 6 at the free throw line. The Wildcats just 2 of 2 there. They out-rebounded. The Wildcats out-rebounded the Falcons 15-14 to in that first half. Falcons turned it over seven times. The Wildcats just five. Individually, Jello Lloyd had a good first half for the Wildcats as he ends up with 10 points at the break. Uh, nine points for Samad Hector. Six apiece from... Seth Dawson and uh, Cameron McNeil both off the bench. As uh, Maverick Sanders ends up leading the Wildcats in rebounds with five. He had four points as well. And uh, Kevin Holden had four rebounds of his own to go with three assists. Falcons with eight points from Shaw Anderson, three assists. And a rebound for him. Three of nine from the floor. Did not uh, have a great first half in terms of shooting the basketball. But uh, was able to knock down two of three at the free throw line. Seven points for Kyle Luton. And he had a had back-to-back -back buckets. He's, he's three for three from the floor. One of one from beyond the arc. Jaden Pinnegar a couple of threes. He's got six. And Owen Moriarty with five points and five rebounds. Trace Evans, four points, three rebounds for SPU. As uh, it adds up to a seven-point lead for the Wildcats at the break, 39-32. We'll step aside again here on the SPU webcast. And when we come back, we will take a look around the rest of the Great Northwest Athletic Conference, see what else is going on tonight, and uh, how things have been shaping up lately. We'll be back in a few.
legacy began in 1973. That was the year NCAA Division II was born. And since the very first day, our division has shaped generations of student athletes with a true sense of academics, athletics, and community. That is five decades of graduations, championships, teamwork, and personal development. 50 years of shaping student athletes into world-class leaders. NCAA Division II, our division, our legacy. NCAA Division II Community Engagement is an initiative at all 25 national championships because student athletes want to give back while competing for a national title. Over the course of the year, Division II student athletes have an opportunity to leave a lasting impression in local communities throughout the country. Whether Division II student athletes are volunteering at hospitals, schools, after school care programs, foster homes, or retirement villages, they make a difference in the lives of others. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Back inside Royal Brown Pavilion, Greg Sexton with you on the SPU webcast. Wildcats leading the Falcons 39-32 at the break. As uh, we take a look around the GNAC, and Montana State Billings actually sitting on top now after a win over St. Martin's as uh, Montana State Billings 8-1 in conference, 14-5 overall. St. Martin's 7-2 in conference, 17-2 overall. They're, they're, they only have two losses. They were both in conference. They're currently ranked number seven. They were up to, I believe, number two uh, in Division Two. Central Washington sitting behind th those two schools in third place, tied for third with Northwest Nazarene. Actually, both of the both of them are six and three. And as I mentioned, uh, Central Washington on a four-game win streak. That is the longest win streak in the GNAC currently. Alaska Anchorage sits in fifth at five and four. They're fifteen and five overall, having a good year as well. And Western Washington and Seattle Pacific tied for sixth, and Seattle Pacific has the tiebreaker. Western Washington the better overall record, but uh, the Falcons defeated Western Washington here at home uh, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, on uh, January thirteenth. Behind those two schools, Alaska Fairbanks is at two and seven. Western Oregon is at two and seven, and Simon Fraser at one and eight. As uh, tonight, Western Oregon and uh, I'm sorry, Western Oregon is in action tonight, taking on Simon Fraser in Monmouth, Oregon. As uh, it's actually the Alaska schools that are off tonight. Alaska Fairbanks will be at Anchorage on Saturday, uh, 7 p.m. tip on Saturday uh, evening. But uh, Western Washington is at St. Martin's. That's um, St. Martin's trying to get back in the win column there. Simon Fraser is at Western Oregon. And, of course, we have the game here. Northwest Nazarene is at Montana State Billings. And uh, Northwest Nazarene will be here on Saturday afternoon for a 2 p.m. tip. Northwest Nazarene coming here. Western Washington going to Western Oregon on Saturday. Simon Fraser will go to St. Martin's. Fairbanks will be at Anchorage, and then Central Washington will head to Billings on Saturday. As uh, We'll take another break here on the uh, SPU webcast. Wildcats a 39-32 lead over the Falcons. We'll be right back in just a moment.
Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division 2, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Second half action coming up here from Royal Brown Pavilion in Seattle. Falcons trail by seven at the break. Wildcats had the lead for most of the first half. As the Wildcat or the uh, Falcons rather went cold for a good stretch there, and uh, the Wildcats led by as many as ten. They actually had a 39-29 lead, and then uh, the Falcons with a three-point play from Shaw Anderson to go into halftime. But uh, still a, a good ball game here. The uh, Falcons, if they can get hot in the second half. Got a chance in this one, for sure. It'll be the Wildcats' ball to begin the second half. And it'll be Jello Lloyd to inbound it from midcourt. He'll get it in to Kevin Holden. And the Wildcats, the first possession of the second half. This is Swilly for Hector. Gets it in to Sanders, and Sanders couldn't get the uh, reverse lay in to go. He had his back to the bucket there. Was not able to get that one to go down. Now he's Z with it. Gets it in the post, the high, the uh, really kind of the baseline there for Anderson. Now Anderson comes outside the three point line. Cross court for Moriarty. And Moriarty backing down on Lloyd. No call. They're going to call Moriarty for traveling. As uh, that's the second time in the game where really. Kind of looked like there may have been uh, a charge that was not called. Washington uh, Washington Huskies head coach Mike Hopkins in the building. Just noticed him. As uh, this is Samad Hector being guarded by Trace Evans. Hector backs down. Evans. With the defense there, and he's going to get called for the foul. Hector couldn't get the bucket to go. But uh, he will be at the, the free throw line for two shots here. And I'm uh, thinking maybe there are a few members of... Uh, Potentially the Washington Huskies program sitting there with uh, Coach Mike Hopkins. As Hector misses on the first free throw. Smod Hector, a 73% free throw shooter, gets the second one to go. And it is 40 to 32. Wildcats by eight over the Falcons. Now he's across midcourt. And Z had it knocked away. Get ends up back with it. We get a foul though. And they're gonna call it on Moriarty. Moriarty called for traveling the last time the Falcons had the ball. Now he gets called for a foul. And the Wildcats take it back. Trying to push the lead back up to 10 or more. Hold in for Hector. Hector finds Jello Lloyd floating into the lane and he puts it up and in. Lloyd with 12. And the Wildcats by 10, 42-32. Here's Maui Z. Evans is going to come out and take the pass. Was potentially going to set a screen there. As... Uh, Anderson gets it into Evans, and Evans tried to get it to Z and threw it away to Kevin Holden. Kyle Luton in a transfer from the University of Washington. And so uh, it's possible they're just out here watching him on a night where they're not playing in the Pac-12. 
as uh, Hector comes up short on that one. And the Falcons back the other way. Anderson gets tripped up by Sanders and no call. Going back the other way. And it's Swilly to the bucket. Puts it up and in. The officials kind of letting some things go here. Wildcats by 12. Swilly, Bradley Swilly, his first two points of the ballgame. Evans for Anderson. Anderson gets inside, leaves it short. Gets it back, puts it up, puts it in. Shaw Anderson will get an opportunity at the free throw line. He's got 10 points in the ball game. And uh, the third foul on Maverick Sanders. Kyle Lutonen and Jonas Latour check in for SPU. And Anderson will have an opportunity here at the free throw line. Trying to convert a three-point play as he did at the end of the first half. And he does. He's got 11. Still a nine-point lead for the Wildcats. And the Falcons need to uh, get going on a run at some point here. Sanders being guarded by Latour. Gets it to Hector at the free throw line. Samad Hector being guarded by Shaw Anderson. Hector backing down, reverses it up, and puts it in. Samad Hector with 12 in the ballgame now for the Wildcats. And they lead by 11. Anderson in the lane, puts it up, puts it in over Maverick Sanders. Good move there by Shaw Anderson. Lloyd bumped by Moriarty, and that's going to be a foul on Owen Moriarty. That'll be his third. As uh, Kobe Elsner gets up off the bench for SPU. He'll come in to get Jaden Pentagar. Elsner doesn't see a lot of time, but he will just kind of make an appearance here and there, and then maybe sometimes at the end of ball games if they're out of hand. Falcons with the kick ball there, and uh, Central will keep it. But uh, Kefri Vazio will get Elsner in there, here and there, and uh, now Theo McMillan going to come in as well. He'll come get Moriarty. Moriarty's got three fouls. McMillan seeing his first action of the night. Holden with it, being guarded by Elsner. Nine-point lead for the Wildcats. Early in the second half. Nice pass from Hector to Sanders. Maverick Sanders throws it down, and Hector with the no-look pass. Finds Sanders right at the bucket. 48-37 Central. Here's McMillan. To Latour. Latour going to take a three, and that one is short. Latour can hit from out there, and you don't have to, you don't really have a problem with him taking that shot. But uh, if he doesn't make it, doesn't look good. This one thrown out of bounds though by Jello Lloyd, and it'll be Falcons basketball when we come back from a timeout on the floor here. 15:34 to go in the ball game. Central Washington up by 11, 
Back inside Royal Rome Pavilion, Greg Sexton with you on the SPU webcast. Wildcats shooting 50, 56% for the ball game. Falcons at 42%. And uh, Falcons actually with the edge in rebounds at 17-16. Not a lot of rebounds in this one because a lot of shots have been made, particularly by the Wildcats. Falcons with it across midcourt. Here's Shaw Anderson being guarded by Samad Hector. Anderson backing down on Hector. Holden came over, and now they find Latour for another three, and that one is short. Anderson ends up with the offensive board. He's going to take a three, and that one off the mark. And the Wildcats, another rebound. 15 minutes to go in this one. The Falcons got to find some offense. As this one is knocked out of bounds, it'll stay with the Wildcats. And are we going to get a foul here? Official coming over, and uh, no, he's... Just giving the ball to the Wildcats. Here's Maverick Sanders stepping back, putting it up over Latour, and that one rims out. Rebound to Kyle Lutonen. Falcons back the other way. Theo McMillan with it. Anderson, and he tried to get it through to Latour, and he did somehow. Somehow Jonas Latour ends up with that and puts it in. As uh looked like Wildcats had it sniffed out. Lloyd trying to lay it up and in, couldn't do it. And the Falcons end up with it again. This time McMillan gets it ripped away. But they're going to get a foul. This one is, let's see here. Looked like they held up a three, but I don't think three is on the floor. As uh, Jeanette will check in here, Brizzy will check in. Call a foul on Lloyd. The official held up a three, but uh, it was on five. So, 14-22 to go, and the Falcons down by nine. Here's Shaw Anderson. Hands off to Latour. He's got an open three, and he puts it in. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again, Jonas Latour. He had a two at the bucket a moment ago, and now a three as he got an open look there. And the Falcons within six, 48-42. Here's Brizzy. Being guarded by Latour, and Lutonen comes in and swipes it. McMillan back the other way. Latour going to take a three in transition, and Jonas Latour knocks down another three. And the Falcons right back in it, down by three, 48-45. Timeout, Central Washington. 13.43 to go here in the half. And we're going to step aside here on the SPU webcast. Falcons on a run, getting back in it, down just three. Back inside Royal Brown Pavilion, Greg Sexton with you on the SP webcast. Jonas Latour, eight straight points as uh, it's all Latour. The last couple of minutes here was 48-37, and Latour with eight to make it a 48-45 count now for the Wildcats. They will have possession, and still a lot of time left in this ball game. And we'll see if the Falcons can continue 
to uh, get some offense here. As this one to Brizzy at the bucket. Nice pass there from Jordan Clark to Mitch Brizzy for the bucket. And it's a five-point lead for Central Washington. 50 to 45. Shaw Anderson being guarded by Brizzy out at the free throw line. Here's Kobe Elsner back to Anderson. Anderson drives, gets to the bucket, puts it up and in. Anderson cruising down the lane there. 15 points for him. 13.05 to go in the ball game. And it's a three-point game. Brizzy will set a screen for Clark. And Clark's shot pinballs in and makes it a five-point game again. 52-47. Clark with four for the Wildcats. Here's Anderson again at the top of the key. Gets it to Lutonen. Now McMillan will swing it back to Anderson. Ten on the shot clock. Anderson thinking about it. Drives, steps back, puts it up over Brizzy. Puts it in. Shy Anderson catching fire here in the second half. 17 points for him. And it's another one possession lead now for the Wildcats. 52-49. Here's Clark being guarded by McMillan. Anderson comes over to help. And there's Brizzy. Brizzy is blocked by Luton and gets his own miss, though. Gets to the uh, offensive board and puts it back in. Brizzy with six. And it's a five-point lead again for Central Washington. McMillan swings it to Anderson for a three. And that one off the back iron, no good. A rebound comes down to Mitch Brizzy. And here come the Wildcats with a five-point lead. Seth Dawson in the front court. Jordan Clark with it. Being guarded by McMillan. 11.30 to play. Clark down the lane finds Jeanette at the bucket. Nice find there by Clark. And Jeanette with the two, his first two of the game. Seven-point lead for Central. Here's McMillan in the front court for Anderson. Moriarty a long stay on the bench here. Anderson got underneath the bucket, couldn't get it back out, and hit the bottom of the glass with it. Cameron McNeil will find Jordan Clark out near the circle. Jonas Latour defending him, and now Anderson switches onto him. Clark steps back, puts in a three, and the Wildcats right back up by 10. 59-49, Jordan Clark playing some good minutes here. Got the assist a moment ago, and now the three-pointer. He's got seven points in the ballgame. Anderson trying to go around Brizzy. Does, gets it in. As Anderson was able to continue with that one. And he will get another opportunity at a three-point play when we come back from a timeout here. 10-29 to go in the ballgame. 59-51, Central Washington leading SPU. Anderson at the free throw line when we come back. Inside Brown Pavilion, 59-51, Wildcats with the lead. Shy Anderson going to the free throw line after the Falcons break their huddle here. Samad Hector checking back in for Central Washington. And uh, Moriarty is going to be back in. Latour still out there for the Falcons. And uh, Jaden Pentagar back in as well. Theo McMillan stays on the floor. 
Kobe Elsner to the bench. And Anderson getting ready to try to complete the three-point play here, and he does. And that's his third time in, in this game that he has had an and one situation and converted. He's got 20 points in the game. Clark still out there being guarded by McMillan. Clark over in the corner to Jeanette. He drives and can't get the shot to go, but he is going to draw the foul and get to the free throw line. 10-12 to go. And uh, Latour committing the foul there, his first. Colby Jeanette to the free throw line for two. Junior out of Post Falls, Idaho. And Jeanette's first free throw is true. Nothing but net on that one. Colby Jeanette, perfect on the season at the free throw line. 12 out of 12 coming in, now 13 out of 13. Jello Lloyd back out of the, onto the floor for the Wildcats. As Jeanette will head back to the stripe. And that one misses. His first miss from the free throw line. Now 13 out of 14 on the season. Falcons with the rebound and the ball. Ten minutes to go. Shaw Anderson being guarded by Samad Hector. Falcons down eight. Anderson dishes to Pinnegar and... He gets the bucket there. They called a goaltend there is what happened. As uh, Pinnegar with eight points now give him the bucket. Goaltending the call on the Wildcats. So a six-point lead for Central Washington. And Jordan Clark gets the bucket and puts it in and draws the foul. Jordan Clark heading to the free throw line. Or did he... They, I thought that he uh, had the bucket there. They do not give him the continuation. They said the foul was on the floor. And it's going to be an out-of-bounds play here. I don't know if they got that one right. That, uh, that looked like continuation and an and one there for Jordan Clark. But that's not the way the officials saw it. Here's Clark again drawing a foul. Or did he? They're going to go the other way. They call the foul on Samad Hector. And the Falcons will get it back. Falcons caught a break there. That should have been, in my estimation, an and one opportunity for Jordan Clark. But uh, the Wildcats end up committing the offensive foul. And now Jonas Latour will inbound it to Theo McMillan. McMillan and Moriarty uh, out on the floor. Maui Z has been on the bench now for a bit. Pentagar for Anderson. Anderson driving on McNeil. 12 on the shot clock. Anderson backs down. Tried to get it through to McMillan and couldn't. As the Wildcats pick it off and come back the other way. Just over nine minutes to go. Six point lead for Central Washington. Jordan Clark playing some good minutes here in the second half. And he's going to draw a foul. And that's going to go on Latour, I believe. And it is. 8.59 to play here. And Jonas Latour commits his second foul. Latour had eight straight points to get the Falcons back to within three. And now it's a six-point margin. As McNeil gets it in to Jordan Clark. Clark dribbling, being guarded by Anderson. And Clark gets tripped up. No call. As Brandon Renta is incensed. That one out of bounds, and it'll go to SPU. As uh, Clark has kind of been on the short end of a couple of calls here recently. As they've said that he did not get the continuation a few mom a few moments ago and then he gets tripped tripped up going through the lane and no call on that here's shot anderson taking a three and he knocks it down moriarty found him at the three-point line and shot anderson with 23 points in the ball game and now central washington 
Trying to maintain composure here. A lot of time left in this ball game. Clark gets it to McNeil. Cameron McNeil drives and got it up on the glass there. Couldn't get the shot to go, but he'll be at the free throw line. Foul goes on Theo McMillan. And Cameron McNeil to the free throw line. Senior out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And he misses on the first free throw. Maui Z comes back in, as does Kyle Lutonen for SPU. And McNeil with another opportunity to make this a two-possession game. And he gets that second free throw to go. Cameron McNeil, seven points in the ballgame. 61-57, Central Washington. Here's Maui Z across midcourt, gets it to Anderson. Anderson being guarded by Samad Hector out of Brooklyn, New York. Z moving to his right. Gets it back out to Anderson, 12 on the shot clock. Anderson has Jordan Clark switch onto him. Anderson puts it up and puts it in and ended up shooting that one over Hector in the lane. And shot Anderson 25 points in the ball game. And the Falcons back within two. 61-59, good one shaping up here down the stretch. Clark with it to McNeil. McNeil being guarded by Z over in the corner, a three on the way from Jeanette, and that one is no good. Falcons with the rebound, a chance to tie or take the lead. Luton in a three, puts it in. Kyle Luton in a quick three, and he knocks it down, and the Falcons in the lead for the first time in a long time. 62-61, here's Jello Lloyd stepping back, and that one's off the mark. Rebound ends up in the hands of Jonas Latour. And the Falcons up by one with under seven minutes to play, heading the other way as Maui Z brings it across midcourt. Gets a screen from Anderson, and now it's taken away by Jeanette. Jeanette's going to have a clean path and a one-handed dunk, the right hand, and the, the Wildcats go back up. By a point, 63-62. Jeanette with five points in the ballgame. Jeanette guessed right on that one and had an easy pass to the bucket. Here's Anderson, though, down the lane. Couldn't get it to go. Tipped out. Jeanette ends up with it. And the Wildcats with a one-point lead. 6-10 to go in the ballgame. Jordan Clark will get it to Hector at the free throw line. Here's Lloyd taking a deep three, and that one off the mark. Rebound to Luton in. He'll hand off to Maui Z. Falcons with an opportunity again to take the lead, but Kefri Fazio wants to talk things over. And so the Falcons will take a timeout with 5.56 to go. 63-62 Central Washington. And we will step aside here on the SPU webcast. Good ball game coming down to the wire here in the next few minutes. We'll be right back in just a moment. Inside Royal Brome Pavilion in Seattle, Greg Sexton with you on the SP webcast. We got a tight one going here, 556 to go. Wildcats with the lead, 63-62. Both teams now shooting 50% or better from the floor. Falcons at 50%, Wildcats at 54%. Falcons have held the lead for exactly 52 seconds in this entire game. 
as uh, they led briefly here in the second half. They uh, led for a little bit in the first half as well early in the game. But uh, trying to retake the lead again here with Owen Moriarty inbounding to Maui Z. Anderson drives around Hector, gets to the bucket, lays it up and in. Got around Samad Hector and nobody was there to help. And the Falcons with the lead again, 64-63. Anderson, 27 points in the ballgame. Here's Jordan Clark. Dribbling out near midcourt. Looking for somewhere to go with it. Gets it to Jeanette. And now Samad Hector backing down on Jonas Latour. Puts it up over him and puts it in. And Samad Hector now with 14 points in the ball game. Wildcats with a one-point lead. 65-64. Hector's got a bit of a size advantage on Latour. Jeanette knocks it away, but Moriarty is right there. Here's Maui Z for Anderson. Anderson looking for a screen, now backs down. Gets it out to Z. Z drives the lane and couldn't get it to go. Rebound Hector. That one was hanging up on the rim. But uh, the Wildcats back the other way with a one-point lead. Again, Jordan Clark killing some time out near midcourt. And now in the corner, Jello Lloyd steps inside the arc. That one rims out. And Lloyd has gone cold here in the second half after starting off pretty well in the first half. Falcons with the ball. Z to his left. Thought about it. Gets it to Lutonen instead. Kyle Lutonen drains another three. And the Falcons retake the lead. 67-65. Kyle Lutonen, 13 points off the bench. Falcons by two, under four minutes to play in the ballgame. Here's Clark to Jeanette. Back out to Clark. Inside for Hector. Hector at the bucket, turns and puts it in. Nice assist there from Jordan Clark. And Samad Hector with 16 points in the game. Tie ball game, 67 apiece. Three and a half to go. Here's Shaw Anderson. Anderson being guarded by Hector, hands off to Maui Z in the corner. Moriarty behind the back, gets to the bucket, puts it up and in off the glass. Owen Moriarty had a quiet night so far, but seven points now for him, and puts the, he puts the Falcons back in front by two. Here's Kevin Holden. Getting it to, to Samad Hector. Hands off to Clark and... Now is he going to get called for the foul here on Jordan Clark? And that will take us to our final media timeout. I'm assuming it's not going to be our final timeout of the game, but the last media timeout, 2.57 to go in the ballgame. Falcons by two, 69-67. We'll be right back to Royal Brown Pavilion in just a moment. Good ball game coming down to the wire here inside Royal Brown Pavilion in Seattle. February 1st. And a uh, couple of good ball games here. The women's team defeated Central by double digits, actually, 76 65. But that one came down where uh, the Wildcats were looking to get back in it. 
in this one. Wildcats had a double-digit lead early in the second half. And now they trail by two. Jordan Clark at the free throw line. And it's a one and one situation, and he rattles the first one in. Jordan Clark, 65% at the free throw line on the season. 5.3 points per game for Clark. And he gets both free throws here. Big free throws, as are any free throws in the final minutes of a ball game. Just inside three minutes to go in this one, and the Falcons are able to break the press. Get it to Luton in, another three on the way, and that one is off the mark. The, but the rebound, though, comes down to Owen Moriarty. 69 apiece. Here's Maui Z being guarded by Kevin Holden. And now Shaw Anderson with it, going against Samad Hector. Anderson backs down, spins, turns, and that one rims out. Rebound to Luton and sticks it right back up and in. Kyle Lutman with some big buckets here in the second half for the Falcons. He's got 15. 71 to 69. Here's Hector. Gets it to Lloyd. He's going to take a three, and that one is well short. Rebound comes right to Shaw Anderson. And the Falcons with the ball and the lead. Two minutes to play. Maui Z across midcourt. Here's Anderson. Gets it out to Pinagar, right back to Anderson in the post, being guarded by Samad Hector. Anderson puts it up over Hector, puts it in! Shaw Anderson with 29 points in the ball game, and you just you can't leave him any space. He can, sco he can score from anywhere on the floor. Four-point lead for the Falcons. Here's Jordan Clark. Gets it in. No, they, it's ripped away by Maui Z. Trying to get it to Samad Hector. And Z comes up with the steal. Minute 22 to go in the ball game. Four point lead for the Falcons. Here is Anderson. Falcons have just worn the Wildcats down, down the stretch here. And now trying to come up with another dagger here as uh, Shaw Anderson takes it to the bucket. Draws the foul, couldn't get the shot to go, but he'll be at the free throw line with a minute five to go. Wildcats held the lead for a lot of this game, but too much shot Anderson down the stretch here. Brandon Rento wants a timeout. With a minute five to go in the ball game, Anderson will be at the free throw line for two shots, and this will be a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here. Falcons have outscored the Wildcats 41 to 30 in the second half. And uh, we go back a little bit. Wildcats had a 48 to 37 lead with 1602 to go in the ball game. And then Jonas Latour scored eight to get the Falcons within three. Wildcats Push the lead back out a bit. But uh, the uh, Falcons now in front by four. And Shaw Anderson at the free throw line when we come out of the timeout here. Falcons shooting now 52% for the ball game. 40% beyond the arc. Seven of eight at the free throw line. Anderson the lone miss. But Shaw Anderson is four of five at the stripe. Moriarty, 3 of 3. The only two Falcons to shoot free throws tonight. And here's Anderson with a couple of big free throws. And he gets the first one to go. Five team fouls on the Wildcats. So the Falcons not in the bonus yet, but it was a shooting foul. And Anderson knocks in both free throws, and they're going to bring Theo McMillan in here for Maui Z. Maui Z with just one foul, but uh, they apparently like McMillan on the defensive end here. As Jordan Clark now has Shaw Anderson switch onto him. Clark gets to the bucket, lays it up and in, reversed it up. And a good move there by Jordan Clark. He's got. 11. And this one is thrown away. 
And SPU may have gotten bailed out there. I think they're going to take a look at this on the monitor. Now EZ will come back in. As, uh, yeah, they send the teams to their benches, and they are going to take a look at this on the monitor. 50 seconds to go in the ballgame. And the Falcons with a four-point lead. As the uh, ball got thrown away, and the question is, who touched it last? So big call coming up here. Still 50 seconds to go, plenty of time. Particularly if Central Washington ends up with possession here. Even if the Falcons do, Central Washington, Central Washington does not have to foul as uh, just a four-point game at this point. As they take a look on the monitor, Shaw Anderson with uh, 31 points in the ball game, five rebounds, five assists. And he is uh, 12 of 24 overall from the floor, 6 of 7 at the free throw line. Just 1 of 5 beyond the arc. He's not typically a uh, major three-point threat, but he can knock him down from out there. For the Wildcats, Samad Hector with 16 points, 3 rebounds. Jello Lloyd with 12 points. He had 10 at the break. And just two here in the second half. And Jordan Clark with 11. Jordan Clark has seen a lot of good minutes here in the second half. He has played 25 minutes in the ball game. A lot of those in this second half. As uh, he has seen the majority of the point guard duties here for the Wildcats. Freshman from Seattle. And just... Uh, I was uh, commenting on the women's uh, team for Central Washington having a lot of freshmen and sophomores. The, the uh, Wildcats actually with three seniors. Falcons with a few as well. But uh, some freshmen getting some, some good minutes here for Central Washington. They confer, they, uh, they give the ball to SPU. And some of the fans on the central side not agreeing with the uh, the call there, but uh, apparently they got a good look at it, and so they give it to the to the Falcons, and they catch a break as they uh, kind of threw that one away. This one comes into Pentagar, and now they throw it away. Here is Jeanette Hector gets it to him at the bucket. And the uh, Wildcats back within two now as Jeanette has seven points and the Falcons couldn't get it across midcourt. And now I believe they got a timeout from the bench. Kefri Fazio taking the timeout. Falcons struggling to get it in bounds and get it across midcourt as uh, they still have 42.7 left in this game. And their six point lead a moment ago has been trimmed to two. 42.7 left. 30 second timeout. We'll keep it right here. As Clark had a lay in with 53 seconds left. And then uh, Jeanette, as uh, the, the uh, Wildcats came up with a steal. And the Falcons still going to need to get it across midcourt here. Caffrey Fazio. Giving directions to his team. With 42.7 left on the clock. The Falcons really could use a win here to get to 5-5. Five and five. They get it across midcourt. Maui Z will get it to Moriarty. Wildcats don't need a foul yet. Z will get it to Anderson. Anderson being guarded by Hector. Big possession here for the Falcons. Anderson carries it through the lane, gets it back out to Pinnegar. Pinnegar lays it up. They're going to call him for a charge. It's going the other way. 
Pinnegar gets called for the charge with 19.9 left. And the Wildcats will have the opportunity to tie or take the lead. Falcons thought they had a bucket there. I thought Pinnegar had the bucket and got the blocking foul, but they call him for the charge. And here come the Wildcats. 15 seconds to go in the ballgame. Here's McNeil. Going up over Lutonen, and McNeil puts it in. The turnaround jumper, 9.3 left on the clock, and we're tied at 75. It'll come into Maui Z. He'll get it across for Moriarty. Six on the clock. Moriarty just throws it up. Anderson collects the offensive rebound and puts it up and in. Shaw Anderson in the right place at the right time. 33 points in the ballgame for Shaw Anderson. And another timeout called here. Let's see if they got a foul as well. Anderson, the official saying, no, there's... He's telling Central Washington they do, do they do not have any timeouts. I think Kefri Fazio... No, I'm sorry. Actually, Brandon Renta did. A little bit of confusion here. I don't believe they got a foul. They're going to set the uh, reset the clock to 3.3 .3 here. As uh, Moriarty just kind of threw one up. Didn't really need to. He still had six seconds left on the clock. But uh, Anderson was right there to collect it and put it back up and in. And shot Anderson with 33 points in the ballgame. Theo McMillan's going to check back in for SPU. Two-point game, 77-75, 3.3 left on the clock. Take a look at... Shaw Anderson's numbers. Don't believe that is a career high. But it is a season high. Anderson has had 30 a couple of times this season. Actually had a 31 point game. Now has 33 in this one. I believe his career high is 34 if I'm not mistaken. Which I may be. I'm, uh, that's, that's totally from memory. 3.3 left. Wildcats with possession. And Theo McMillan out there on defense. And now SPU going to take a timeout. So, Wildcats talk things over. And this will be, it was announced as a full timeout. It is a full timeout, but let's keep it here. Just 3.3 left in the ball game. Wildcats have shot 56% from the floor tonight. Falcons at 52%. Falcons have knocked down 8 out of 20 beyond the arc. 40% there. Wildcats 6 out of 16. Each team has only shot 10 free throws in the game. Falcons 9 of 10. Wildcats 7 of 10. And the Falcons with a 29-22 rebounding edge. As... Uh, Falcons to have turned it over 15 times and the Wildcats just 10. But uh, Falcons with a two point lead here. 3.3 left. Big bucket by Shaw Anderson a moment ago to give him 33 for the game. And the Falcons return to the floor. McMillan is out there. He's going to be guarding. The ball, the inbounds pass. It'll be Jeanette to get it in. Wildcats have Jeanette, Hector, Lloyd, McNeil, and Clark on the floor. For the Falcons, Moriarty, Anderson, McMillan, Pinnegar, and Lutonen. And Jeanette running the baseline gets it into McNeil. McNeil puts it up from the free throw line, and it's short, and the Falcons win. 77 to 75, McNeil leaves it short at the buzzer. He had a good look, but he couldn't get it to go down. And the Falcons escape with a win. 77 to 75. What a game here. Both games, great games tonight as the Falcons win both the women's game and the men's game. And the men's game, a tight one. 
came down to a two-point ball game. And Cameron McNeil with a good look at the bucket. A floater from just inside the three-point line, and he came up short. And the Falcons hold on for the win. They go to 12-11 and 11 overall. They go to 5-5 five and five in conference play, and that was a big win for them. As uh, really at this point, they need every win they can get trying to make it into the GNAC tournament. Central Washington drops to 13-6. and six. They drop to 6-4 and four in conference play. And so the uh, Falcons, just a game behind them, they have split the season series. Uh, Central Washington took the first one in Ellensburg back about a month ago on January 6th. But uh, the Falcons... Trailed for the majority of this game. They were able to uh, make some big plays down the stretch. And uh, Jonas Latour had eight straight points. And then Shaw Anderson kind of took over. And uh, what a ball game here tonight. Shaw Anderson finishes with 33 for the game. Central Washington gets 16 from Samad Hector. 12 from Jello Lloyd. 11 from Jordan Clark. Who so gave them some good minutes off the bench. And for the Falcons, 33 from Shaw Anderson and 15 from Kyle Luton. And do not underestimate or uh, minimize the uh, the impact he had on this one. As he gives his uh, former head coach, Mike Hopkins, a hug. Kyle Luton does. And uh, Jonas Latour with eight straight. He had eight points for the game, but uh, they were eight in a row as uh, Owen Moriarty ends up with seven points and six rebounds. Anderson, 33 points, six rebounds, five assists. And the Falcons get it done, 77 to 75. So, coming up on Saturday, it'll be the men playing first against Northwest Nazarene. That'll be a 2 p.m. tip. And then the women will follow at 4.15. So another doubleheader of action coming your way on Saturday. This has been a great night of basketball from Royal Brown Pavilion. Falcons get the win. The women's team ends up with a double-digit win, but it was closer than that. The men's team comes back. And wins by two. Shaw Anderson, the game winner, with 3.3 left on the clock. And the Wildcats with the final attempt coming up short from Cameron McNeil. We'll see you on Saturday afternoon for more basketball. Men take the court at two and the women at 415, both versus Northwest Nazarene. We will talk to you then. Have a great rest of your night. Go Falcons.